Have you ever wondered how ancient civilizations built colossal towers without modern technology? Imagine towering structures that defy explanation, built by ancient hands with unknown purposes. From hidden chambers to astronomical alignments, these towers spark endless fascination and debate. Stay with us as we delve into the mysteries behind 15 enigmatic towers from ancient cultures that continue to baffle historians and archaeologists alike. Each one tells a story of human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge, adding layers to our understanding of history. So, let's embark on this journey together and explore the secrets of these ancient marvels. The first tower on our journey is the Watchtower of Sayulk. Starting in Iran, the ancient ziggurat of Sayulk, over 5,000 years old, challenges our understanding of early urban development. Was it merely a lookout or did it serve a more sacred function? This remarkable structure, located near the city of Kashan, stands as a testament to the sophisticated architectural and societal advancements of the early civilizations in the region. The ziggurat is composed of layers of mud brick that have withstood the test of time, suggesting a level of engineering knowledge that seems almost ahead of its time. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Watchtower of Sayulk is its dual-purpose design. On one hand, its elevated position would have provided an exceptional vantage point for observing and defending the surrounding area. On the other hand, its alignment with certain celestial bodies hints at a possible religious or astronomical purpose. The top of the ziggurat, once accessible by a series of steep steps, may have served as a platform for rituals or as an observation point for tracking the movement of the stars. The exact purpose of the Watchtower of Sayulk remains a topic of debate among historians and archaeologists. Some argue that its primary function was defensive, a place where sentinels could watch for approaching enemies. Others believe it was a center of worship where priests conducted ceremonies in honor of their gods. The dual nature of this tower adds to its enigmatic appeal, leaving us to wonder about the lives of those who built and used it. As we continue our exploration, each new tower will bring us closer to unraveling the mysteries of these ancient structures. The second tower on our journey involves the Nurag of Sardinia. Jumping to Sardinia, Italy, these megalithic edifices known as Nurag date back to the Bronze Age. Their true purpose remains elusive were they fortresses, temples, or something else altogether. These stone structures, numbering over 7,000 across the island, are unique to Sardinia and are characterized by their truncated cone shapes made of large basalt stones. The tallest among them, such as the Nurag Santu Antony, reach heights of up to 70 feet, showcasing the advanced stone masonry skills of the Nuragic civilization. One of the most compelling aspects of the Nurag is their complex internal structures, some contain multiple chambers connected by staircases and corridors, often with niches and shelves built into the walls. This intricate design suggests they may have served multiple functions, perhaps as residences, community centers, or even places of ritual. However, the scarcity of written records from the Neuragic period leaves much to speculation. Some scholars propose that the Neurag were fortified strongholds, providing defense against invaders with their thick walls and elevated positions. Others hypothesize that they were religious temples used for worship and ceremonies, given the discovery of altars and sacred items within some sites. There's also the theory that these structures were symbols of power and prestige, built by elite families to assert their dominance over the landscape and its people. The architectural diversity of the Nurag complicates the task of pinning down a single purpose, with some even featuring intricate labyrinthine designs that could have served as storerooms or prisons. The mystery of the Nurag endures much like the structures themselves, sparking continuous research and investigation. As we move forward, we'll delve into more enigmatic towers that mirror the ingenuity and mystery found in these ancient Sardinian marvels. 
The third tower on our journey involves the majestic stone towers of Great Zimbabwe. Moving to southern Africa, these impressive towers are part of a larger complex that stands as a testament to the architectural and societal achievements of the ancient Shona civilization. Constructed between the 11th and 15th centuries, Great Zimbabwe was the heart of a thriving empire that controlled vast trade networks extending to distant regions. The stone structures, including the iconic Great Enclosure with its towering walls, are built without mortar, showcasing advanced masonry techniques and a profound understanding of structural stability. One of the most captivating aspects of Great Zimbabwe is its sheer scale and the intricate craftsmanship of its architecture. The Great Enclosure features walls that soar over 30 feet high and extend for hundreds of feet, forming a massive elliptical structure that has puzzled scholars and archaeologists for decades. The use of closely fitted granite blocks, meticulously shaped and arranged, reflects a high level of engineering prowess and an intimate knowledge of the local geology. This construction method not only provided durability, but also allowed the walls to flex and withstand the natural forces of the environment. The purpose of these formidable towers and walls remains a subject of intense debate. Some researchers propose that they served as royal palaces, housing the elite and providing a secure environment for the ruling class. Others suggest they were ceremonial centers where significant cultural and religious activities took place, given the presence of ritual objects and evidence of altars within the site. The impressive height and solidity of the walls also imply a defensive role, protecting the inhabitants from potential threats. Furthermore, the wealth and prosperity of Great Zimbabwe are highlighted by the artifacts found within the ruins, including intricate jewelry, pottery, and items made of gold and ivory. These discoveries indicate a society with a high degree of sophistication and extensive trade connections, reaching as far as China and the Middle East. This trade network likely contributed to the construction of such grandiose structures, reinforcing Great Zimbabwe's position as a powerful and influential center in the region. As we unravel the secrets of Great Zimbabwe, we gain insight into a civilization that was both materially rich and culturally vibrant. The stone towers stand as silent witnesses to a bygone era, evoking admiration and curiosity about the people who thrived in this part of the world. Our journey continues as we explore more enigmatic towers, each reflecting the unique legacy and ingenuity of ancient cultures across the globe. The fourth tower on our journey involves the Brocks of Scotland. Across the sea in Scotland, Iron Age Brocks present a unique architectural puzzle. These circular stone towers, scattered mainly across the northern and western parts of Scotland, are distinctive for their dry stone construction and impressive height, with some reaching up to 40 feet. The brocks are characterized by their thick walls, which often contain internal galleries and spiral staircases winding their way up the structure. This intricate design hints at a level of engineering skill that is remarkable for the period. One of the most fascinating aspects of the brocks is their dual-walled construction, creating a tall, sturdy frame while providing space for living quarters within the walls themselves. This design not only maximized living space but also added to the overall structural stability, enabling these towers to withstand the test of time. The exact purpose of these brocks remains a topic of debate among historians and archaeologists. Some scholars propose that they served as defensive structures, providing a fortified refuge against invaders. The thick walls and narrow entrances would have made them formidable strongholds, capable of withstanding attacks and protecting the inhabitants within. However, others suggest that the Brocks were more than just defensive bastions. The presence of sophisticated features such as hearths, wells, and storage areas within some brocks indicates that they were also used as dwellings, perhaps housing extended families or serving as centers for community activities. This dual function of defense and habitation adds to the enigma surrounding these structures. 
Another theory posits that the brocks were symbols of status and power, constructed by local chieftains to assert their dominance and showcase their wealth and influence. The sheer effort required to build such towering edifices would have necessitated a significant investment of resources and labor, reinforcing the idea that they were intended as statements of prestige. Additionally, some brocks are located in prominent positions within the landscape, suggesting they were meant to be seen and admired from afar, further supporting the notion of their role as status symbols. The mystery of the brocks continues to captivate researchers, as the lack of written records from this period leaves much to interpretation. Ongoing excavations and studies aim to uncover more about the daily lives of the people who built and inhabited these remarkable towers. As we delve deeper into the past, the Brocks of Scotland stand as enduring reminders of the ingenuity and resilience of Iron Age societies. Our exploration of enigmatic towers continues, each new discovery shedding light on the rich tapestry of human history and the architectural achievements of ancient cultures. The fifth tower on our journey is the Tower of Babel. The Biblical Tower of Babel is one of history's most famous yet enigmatic structures. Was it a mere myth, or did it have historical roots in Mesopotamian ziggurats, reflecting humanity's ambition to reach the heavens? According to the Bible, the people of Babel sought to build a tower that would reach the sky, aiming to make a name for themselves and prevent being scattered across the earth. This narrative has captivated imaginations for centuries, symbolizing human pride and the consequences of overreaching ambition. Many scholars believe the story of the Tower of Babel may have been inspired by real architectural feats in ancient Mesopotamia. Ziggurats, which were massive terraced structures built in the region, bear a striking resemblance to the biblical description of the tower. These structures were religious monuments dedicated to the gods and serving as temples where priests could perform rituals. The most famous of these ziggurats is the Etamenanki, located in the ancient city of Babylon, which some speculate could be the historical inspiration for the Tower of Babel. The construction of ziggurats required advanced engineering skills and considerable resources, involving the labor of thousands of workers over many years. The ziggurat of Etimananki, for example, was believed to have stood nearly 300 feet tall with seven distinct levels, each representing a step closer to the heavens. This ambitious architectural endeavor mirrors the description of the Tower of Babel, which was never completed due to divine intervention according to the biblical account. The story of the Tower of Babel also reflects broader themes seen in various ancient cultures, such as the desire to connect with the divine and establish a monumental legacy. In this sense, the tower serves as a metaphor for human aspiration and the drive to transcend earthly limitations. The confusion of languages, as described in the biblical tale, signifies the fragmentation of human unity, emphasizing the limits of human ambition when faced with divine will. While the physical evidence for the Tower of Babel remains elusive, its legacy endures in literary and cultural references, reminding us of the ancient quest to bridge the gap between heaven and earth. The tower's enduring mystery continues to invite speculation and exploration, highlighting the interplay between myth and history. As we move forward, we'll uncover more about the enigmatic towers that shaped ancient civilizations, each revealing insights into the beliefs and achievements of the cultures that built them. The sixth tower on our journey involves the pharaohs of Alexandria. This ancient lighthouse, situated on the small island of pharaohs in Alexandria, Egypt, was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Built during the reign of Ptolemy II in the 3rd century BC, it stood as a beacon of light guiding sailors safely to the bustling harbor of Alexandria. However, the pharaohs was much more than a mere navigational aid its towering presence reaching estimates of up to 330 feet in height symbolized the ingenuity and ambition of ancient Egyptian engineering. The pharaohs of Alexandria was constructed using large blocks of light-colored stone designed to withstand the harsh coastal environment. 
Its three-tiered structure consisted of a square base, a middle octagonal section, and a cylindrical top crowned with a massive statue, often believed to be of Zeus or Poseidon. This architectural marvel demonstrated a fusion of practical function and artistic grandeur. One of the most intriguing aspects of the pharaohs is the mystery surrounding its internal mechanisms. Ancient texts suggest that it housed a complex system of mirrors and lenses, amplifying the light from a fire at its summit to create a powerful beam visible for miles. This advanced optical system indicated a sophisticated understanding of light and reflection, showcasing the scientific prowess of the ancient Egyptians. Another layer of mystery involves the subterranean chambers believed to be hidden within the lighthouse. Some historians propose that these chambers were used for storage, housing supplies necessary for maintaining the lighthouse's operations. Others speculate that they might have contained secret passages or even served as secure locations for valuable treasures or documents. The pharaohs of Alexandria also played a significant role beyond its practical purpose, embodying the cultural and intellectual achievements of its time. As a center of learning, Alexandria attracted scholars, scientists, and philosophers from across the ancient world, fostering an environment of knowledge and innovation. The lighthouse stood as a symbol of this intellectual spirit, its light representing the illumination of the mind. Despite its ultimate destruction, likely due to a series of earthquakes between the 10th and 14th centuries AD, the legacy of the pharaohs of Alexandria endures. Fragments and ruins discovered on the seabed near the island provide glimpses into its grandeur, inviting continued exploration and admiration. As we ponder the secrets held within its walls, the pharaohs remains a testament to the brilliance and ambition of ancient Egypt. Our journey through these enigmatic towers continues, each revealing new insights into the remarkable achievements of past civilizations. The seventh tower on our journey involves the pillars of Tiahuanaco. Located in Bolivia, this ancient site holds a collection of mysterious pillars and towers that have puzzled historians and archaeologists for centuries. The pillars of Tiahuanaco are part of the larger Tiahuanaco complex, which was once the center of a thriving pre-Columbian civilization. The alignment and positioning of these pillars hint at a sophisticated understanding of astronomy, leading many to speculate that they were part of an ancient observatory or a ceremonial center deeply connected with the stars. One of the most striking features of Tiahuanaco is its precise construction and orientation. The site includes impressive monolithic structures such as the Gate of the Sun, which is intricately carved with symbols and figures believed to be linked to astronomical events. The pillars themselves are strategically placed, suggesting they may have been used to mark solstices, equinoxes, and other significant celestial occurrences. This alignment indicates that the Tiahuanaco people had a profound knowledge of the cycles of the heavens, allowing them to track time and perhaps conduct agricultural or religious activities in accordance with celestial phenomena. Adding to the intrigue is the precision with which the stones at Tiahuanaco were cut and assembled. The use of interlocking stonework without mortar, similar to techniques found in other ancient civilizations, speaks to an advanced level of engineering and craftsmanship. These construction methods have prompted theories that the site was not only a place of astronomical observation, but also a ceremonial center where rituals and offerings were made to appease the gods and ensure harmony with the cosmos. The exact purpose of the pillars of Tiahuanaco remains a subject of debate. Some researchers propose that they served as a calendar, helping the Tiahuanaco people manage agricultural activities by predicting the seasons. Others suggest that the site had a dual function, combining both practical and religious roles. The presence of ceremonial platforms and the discovery of artifacts such as pottery and figurines support the idea that Tiahuanaco was a sacred space where important cultural practices were performed. The mysteries of Tiahuanaco continue to captivate those who study it, as new discoveries and technologies offer fresh insights into its purpose and construction. 
While much remains unknown, the pillars of Tiahuanaco stand as a testament to the ingenuity and astronomical knowledge of an ancient civilization. Our exploration of enigmatic towers continues, each revealing unique aspects of human history and the remarkable achievements of our ancestors. The eighth tower on our journey involves the Round Towers of Ireland. Medieval Ireland is home to these striking round towers that pierce the sky, their true purpose still a subject of ongoing debate. Found scattered across the countryside, often in close proximity to monastic sites, these slender, cylindrical structures are constructed from stone and can range from 50 to over 100 feet in height. Their distinctive design features a conical roof and a single entryway elevated several feet above the ground, accessible only by ladder. One of the most well-preserved examples is the Round Tower at Glendaluff, which stands as a testament to the architectural skill of the time. The exact function of these round towers has intrigued historians and archaeologists for many years. One prevailing theory is that they served as bell towers, known as cloigthich in Gaelic, literally translating to bell house. This hypothesis is supported by the tower's proximity to ecclesiastical sites, suggesting they were used to call monks to prayer and signal significant religious events. The elevated doorways and lack of internal staircases imply that ladders were used, which could easily be pulled up to prevent unwanted access, hence their design aligning with religious purposes. Another compelling theory is that these towers provided a place of refuge during times of Viking invasions, which were common during the early medieval period. The raised doorways would have allowed monks and valuable religious artifacts to be quickly secured from raiders. Once inside, the monks could defend their position by dropping missiles or boiling water on attackers from above. This defensive interpretation is reinforced by the presence of narrow windows, which would have allowed for surveillance and protection while maintaining the structural integrity of the tower. There is also a more mystical interpretation of these towers. Some scholars suggest that the round towers had a symbolic purpose, representing a connection between heaven and earth. The circular shape and height of the towers might have been intended to reflect the cyclical nature of life and the eternal spiritual journey. This idea is further supported by the alignment of some towers with astronomical events hinting at a possible role in observing the heavens and marking time for religious or agricultural purposes. Despite the various theories, the true purpose of Ireland's round towers remains elusive, adding to their enigmatic allure. The craftsmanship involved in their construction, with carefully selected stones and mortar forming a stable and enduring structure, speaks to the ingenuity and dedication of the medieval Irish builders. As we continue to explore more enigmatic towers, each one reveals new layers of complexity and insight into the diverse architectural achievements and cultural expressions of ancient civilizations. The ninth tower on our journey involves the Cantonese pagodas. Moving to China, the Cantonese pagodas are unique architectural marvels that serve as more than just religious shrines. These pagodas, particularly those found in the southern regions of China, reflect a complex blend of cultural, religious, and architectural influences. Evolving over centuries, Cantonese pagodas have come to symbolize the rich heritage and spiritual practices of the region. One of the most fascinating aspects of these pagodas is their distinct architectural style. Unlike the more widely known northern pagodas, which often have a more rigid and uniform structure, Cantonese pagodas feature a more fluid and decorative design. The intricate carvings, elaborate eaves, and vibrant colors used in their construction highlight the artisanship and aesthetic sensibilities of the Cantonese people. Cantonese pagodas often consist of multiple tiers, each adorned with symbolic motifs and figures that reflect Buddhist teachings as well as local folklore. This intricate iconography suggests that the pagodas served not only as places of worship, but also as canvases for conveying spiritual and cultural narratives. 
The evolution of Cantonese pagodas into their present form is believed to be influenced by a combination of indigenous building techniques and external influences from trade and cultural exchanges. Southern China, being a hub for maritime trade, saw an influx of ideas and styles from other parts of Asia and beyond. This blend of influences is evident in the decorative elements and structural innovations found in Cantonese pagodas. One theory about the evolution of these pagodas points to the influence of Indian stupas, which were introduced to China along with Buddhism. Over time, the stupa's simple mound-like structure was transformed into the more vertical and segmented form of the pagoda. The incorporation of local architectural styles and materials further shaped the unique characteristics of Cantonese pagodas. Another factor contributing to their evolution is the role of these pagodas as symbols of regional identity and pride. In many cases, the construction of a pagoda was sponsored by wealthy patrons or community leaders as a demonstration of their devotion and status. This patronage often led to the inclusion of personalized elements and enhancements that set each pagoda apart, reflecting the diverse artistic expressions of the Cantonese culture. The structural design of Cantonese pagodas also had practical considerations. Southern China is prone to typhoons and heavy rainfall, so the pagodas were built with features like wide eaves and sturdy foundations to withstand harsh weather conditions. This attention to durability and resilience is a testament to the advanced engineering skills of the builders. The Cantonese pagoda's enduring appeal lies in their ability to encapsulate a multitude of influences while maintaining a distinct regional identity. They stand as testaments to the ingenuity and adaptability of the Cantonese people, blending religious significance with artistic beauty and architectural innovation. As we continue our journey through the world's enigmatic towers, each structure reveals the intricate connections between culture, spirituality, and architecture, offering us deeper insights into the human desire to create lasting monuments that transcend time. The tenth tower on our journey involves the Sigiriya Rock Fortress. Sri Lanka's Sigiriya, also known as Lion Rock, is an astounding blend of palace and fortress, soaring nearly 660 feet above the surrounding jungle. This ancient site, a testament to the architectural and artistic prowess of the time, has sparked debate about whether it served as a royal palace, a strategic fortress, or both. Constructed during the reign of King Kashiapa in the 5th century AD, Sigiriya demonstrates remarkable ingenuity in its design and construction. One of the most striking aspects of Sigiriya is its unique location. Perched atop a massive rock column, the fortress was both isolated and easily defensible, suggesting it may have been chosen for strategic military purposes. The approach to the summit is guarded by a series of elaborate gates and a massive pair of lion's paws carved into the rock from which the site derives its name. This formidable entrance would have deterred attackers and controlled access, reinforcing the fortress theory. However, Sigiriya is much more than a defensive structure. The summit of the rock is home to the ruins of an elaborate palace complex, complete with royal gardens, terraces, and reservoirs. The sophistication of these features indicates that Sigiriya was also a place of luxury and refinement, designed to showcase the power and wealth of King Kashyapa. The famous frescoes adorning the rock face further highlight the artistic achievements of the era, depicting celestial maidens and scenes of courtly life with vibrant pigments and exquisite detail. The duality of Sigiriya's purpose becomes even more intriguing when considering the extensive water management systems found throughout the site. Ingenious hydraulic designs, including advanced irrigation channels, cisterns, and fountains, reveal an intricate understanding of engineering and environmental control. These systems not only ensured a reliable water supply, but also added to the aesthetic and functional aspects of the palace gardens. Another layer of mystery surrounds the motives behind the construction of Sigiriya. Legend has it that King Kashiapa built the fortress and palace as a safe haven after overthrowing his father and fearing retribution from his half-brother. 
This narrative suggests that the choice of location was driven by the need for security and isolation. However, some scholars argue that Sigeria was intended as a symbolic representation of the mythical Mount Meru, the center of the universe in Buddhist cosmology, pointing to its role as a sacred and ceremonial site. The debate over Sigeria's primary function, whether as a fortress, a palace, or a sacred site, continues to captivate historians and archaeologists. What remains undeniable is the site's impressive combination of natural beauty, architectural innovation, and artistic achievement. Sigeria stands as a monument to a bygone era, reflecting the complexities and aspirations of the civilization that created it. Our exploration of enigmatic towers continues, each revealing new facets of human ingenuity and the diverse ways ancient cultures sought to leave their mark on the world. The eleventh tower on our journey involves the Sumerian ziggurats. Returning to Mesopotamia, the monumental ziggurats of the Sumerians served as both temples and administrative centers. These impressive stepped structures rose prominently within the ancient city-states, symbolizing the profound connection between the earthly and the divine in Sumerian culture. Each ziggurat with its massive terraced levels was dedicated to the city's patron deity, acting as a bridge between the gods and the human inhabitants below. One of the most iconic examples is the great ziggurat of Ur, which stood as a focal point of spiritual and civic life. The Sumerian ziggurats were not merely architectural marvels but also held significant cultural and religious importance. The ziggurats were seen as the dwelling places of the gods, and their towering heights were intended to bring the priests closer to the divine realm. The process of ascending the ziggurat steps was both a literal and symbolic journey, representing a pilgrimage towards spiritual enlightenment and communion with the gods. Each level of the ziggurat was thought to bring individuals a step closer to heaven, mirroring the Sumerians' sophisticated cosmology and religious beliefs. Beyond their religious function, the ziggurats also served as administrative hubs, playing a central role in the governance and organization of the city-state. The temples atop these structures were not only places of worship, but also housed the offices of high priests and officials who oversaw various aspects of city life, including the distribution of resources, legal matters, and record-keeping. This dual purpose highlights the integration of spiritual and administrative duties in Sumerian society, emphasizing the central role of religion in both personal and public life. The construction of these ziggurats required immense effort and resources, reflecting the Sumerians' advanced engineering skills and societal organization. Large quantities of mud bricks, which were the primary building material, were meticulously crafted and assembled to create these imposing structures. The precise construction techniques ensured the stability and durability of the ziggurats, allowing them to withstand the test of time and the elements. The deeper cultural significance of the Sumerian ziggurats is evident in their enduring legacy. These structures were not only physical embodiments of the Sumerians' devotion to their gods, but also symbolized the unity and identity of the city-state. The ziggurats served as monumental reminders of the community's collective efforts and faith, fostering a sense of shared purpose and belonging among the inhabitants. Moreover, the ziggurat's prominent placement within the urban landscape underscored the centrality of religion and governance in Sumerian life, reinforcing the idea that the welfare of the city was intrinsically linked to the favor of the gods. As we continue our journey through these enigmatic towers, the Sumerian ziggurats offer a profound glimpse into the intricate interplay between architecture, religion, and administration in ancient Mesopotamian societies. Each ziggurat stands as a testament to the Sumerians' architectural ingenuity, religious fervor, and complex social structure, inviting us to delve deeper into the rich tapestry of human history and the remarkable achievements of our ancestors. The twelfth tower on our journey involves the Choco culture's great kivas, in the American Southwest, Chaco Canyon's Great Kivas hold a special place within Puebloan culture, 
reflecting a blend of architectural ingenuity and deep spiritual significance. These subterranean structures, typically circular and built into the ground, are among the largest and most intricate ceremonial spaces constructed by the ancient Puebloans. One of the most striking aspects of the Great Kivas is their sheer size, with some reaching diameters of up to 60 feet and depths of over 10 feet. The Great Kivas were constructed using a combination of stone and adobe, featuring a central fire pit, roof supports, and benches along the perimeter. This design facilitated communal activities and ritual ceremonies, suggesting a multifaceted purpose that extended beyond mere architectural grandeur. The exact function of the Great Kivas has long intrigued archaeologists and historians. One prevailing theory is that they served as sacred spaces for religious ceremonies and rituals. This interpretation is supported by the presence of altars, ceremonial artifacts, and evidence of structured ceremonial practices within these spaces. The central fire pit, for instance, likely played a crucial role in various rites, symbolizing the connection between the earthly and the divine. Additionally, the alignment of some great kivas with celestial events hints at their use in astronomical observations and the marking of important calendrical events. Another compelling theory is that the Great Kivas functioned as communal gathering places where members of the Puebloan society could assemble for social, political, and economic activities. The spacious interiors and seating arrangements would have accommodated large groups, facilitating discussions, decision-making, and communal feasting. This interpretation underscores the role of the Great Kivas as central hubs within the Chacon society fostering a sense of unity and collective identity among the inhabitants. The dual nature of these structures as both ceremonial and communal spaces reflects the integrated nature of Puebloan life, where spirituality, community, and governance were deeply interconnected. Adding to the mystery of the great kivas is their sophisticated construction and engineering, the use of timber beams to support the roofs, combined with the precise stone masonry, demonstrates a high level of craftsmanship and architectural knowledge. The builders also incorporated features such as ventilation systems and drainage channels, ensuring the functionality and durability of these subterranean spaces. This attention to detail highlights the importance of the great kivas within the Chacon society, indicating that considerable resources and effort were devoted to their construction and maintenance. The great kivas of Choco Canyon continue to captivate researchers and visitors alike, offering invaluable insights into the complex cultural and spiritual life of the ancient Puebloans. As we explore these enigmatic towers, we gain a deeper appreciation for the ways in which ancient cultures expressed their beliefs organized their societies and created enduring legacies through their architectural achievements. Our journey through the world's ancient towers continues, each one revealing unique facets of human ingenuity and the rich tapestry of our shared history. The 13th tower on our journey involves the towers of Pistum. Nestled in southern Italy, Pistum was once a bustling Greek colony known for its impressive temples. While the Doric columns dominate the landscape, it is the lesser-known towers that add an extra layer of mystery to this ancient city. These towers scattered around the city's perimeter prompt questions about their exact purpose. Were they primarily defensive structures, or did they hold religious significance? One theory posits that the towers of Pistum served as part of the city's defense system. Their strategic placement along the city walls suggests they may have been watchtowers, providing a vantage point for spotting potential invaders. Pistum, like many Greek colonies, faced threats from rival states and local tribes. The elevated positions of the towers would have allowed sentinels to keep a vigilant eye on the surrounding landscape, offering early warning of any approaching danger. The robust construction of these towers made from local limestone indicates they were built to withstand attacks, further supporting their defensive role. On the other hand, there is speculation that some of these towers might have served a more religious or ceremonial function. 
Pistum was a city deeply embedded in religious practices, as evidenced by its magnificent temples dedicated to Hera, Athena, and Poseidon. The towers may have been integrated into religious processions or served as platforms for rituals connected to the city's deities. Proximity to the sacred precincts suggests that some towers could have been used by priests or other religious officials, offering a higher vantage point for observing celestial events or performing sacred rites. Additionally, the dual purpose theory cannot be overlooked. Ancient Greek cities often combined military and religious functions within their architectural designs. The towers in Pistum might have been multifunctional, serving both as defensive outposts and as integral parts of religious ceremonies. This blend of practicality and spirituality is a hallmark of Greek architecture, reflecting the intertwined nature of daily life and divine worship in ancient times. The true purpose of the Towers of Pistum continues to intrigue archaeologists and historians, as ongoing excavations and studies reveal more about this ancient site. Each discovery adds pieces to the puzzle. Whether these towers were primarily watchtowers, religious platforms, or both, they stand as a testament to the ingenuity and cultural complexity of Pistum's inhabitants. Our exploration of the world's enigmatic towers continues, with each new site offering deeper insights into the architectural and societal innovations of ancient civilizations. The 14th tower on our journey involves the temples of Malta. Situated in the heart of the Mediterranean, Malta's megalithic temples are among the oldest free-standing structures in the world, predating even the Egyptian pyramids. These remarkable temples, built by Neolithic builders around 3600 to 2500 BC, feature tower-like structures that continue to baffle archaeologists and historians. One of the most well-known examples is the Jiwith, dot above Gantaja temples on the island of Gozo, which means Giant's Tower. The name itself evokes the awe-inspiring scale and craftsmanship of these ancient constructs. These massive stone edifices are composed of large limestone blocks, some weighing several tons, stacked with incredible precision without the use of mortar. How were these immense stones transported and arranged by people with only primitive tools at their disposal? This question remains one of the biggest enigmas surrounding the temples of Malta. The architectural sophistication of these temples is evident in their intricate layouts and engineering prowess. The temples are typically characterized by a series of semi-circular apses connected by a central corridor, forming a trefoil or cloverleaf pattern. Within these apses are altars, oracle holes, and other ceremonial features, suggesting a complex ritualistic purpose. The alignment of certain structures with astronomical events like the solstices and equinoxes further indicates that these temples may have played a role in both religious and calendrical practices. One of the most intriguing features of the Maltese temples is their acoustics. The interiors are designed in such a way that sound reverberates powerfully, amplifying voices and musical instruments used during rituals. This would have created an immersive and possibly awe-inspiring sensory experience for those participating in or witnessing the ceremonies. The combination of architectural precision and acoustical design points to a sophisticated understanding of both engineering and human experience by the temple builders. Another compelling aspect is the rich collection of artifacts found within the temples. These include statues, pottery, and intricate carvings, some of which are believed to depict deities or figures of worship. The prominently featured fat ladies statues representing fertility goddesses underscore the temple's possible role in fertility rites and agricultural ceremonies. The presence of these artifacts provides insight into the spiritual and everyday life of the Neolithic Maltese people. However, the exact purpose of these temples remains a subject of intense debate. Were they primarily places of worship dedicated to earth and fertility deities, or did they serve broader communal functions? The lack of written records from this period leaves much to interpretation. 
Some researchers proposed that the temples were multifunctional, serving as centers for both religious ceremonies and social gatherings, much like the great kivas of Choco Canyon. This dual-purpose theory aligns with the idea that ancient people often integrated spiritual and communal activities within the same space. The mystery surrounding the construction and use of Malta's megalithic temples adds to their allure, drawing researchers and visitors alike to these ancient sites. As we continue our journey through the world's enigmatic towers, the temples of Malta offer a fascinating glimpse into the ingenuity and spiritual life of Neolithic societies. These ancient structures remind us of humanity's enduring quest to connect with the divine and to leave a lasting legacy through monumental architecture. Our exploration continues as we delve into the final enigmatic tower in our journey through ancient marvels. Stay tuned to uncover more secrets of human history and architectural achievement. The 15th tower on our journey is the Minaret of Jam. Afghanistan's Minaret of Jam stands as a soaring medieval marvel covered in intricate calligraphy, a testament to the rich cultural heritage of the region. Rising to a height of approximately 213 feet, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is believed to have been built in the late 12th century during the Gurid dynasty. The minaret is renowned for its elaborate brickwork and stunning decoration, featuring geometric patterns and Kufic inscriptions that highlight the artistic and architectural achievements of the time. One of the most captivating aspects of the Minaret of Jam is its mysterious origins and purpose. Historians and archaeologists have debated whether it was a standalone structure or part of a larger, now lost urban landscape. Some suggest it may have been part of the ancient city of Ferozka, the summer capital of the Gurid dynasty, which was known for its grandeur and sophistication. The minaret's strategic location at the junction of the Hari and Jam rivers hints at its importance in the medieval period. It may have served as a watchtower or a symbol of the Gurid's power and influence, visible to travelers and traders passing through the region. The presence of a mosque or a madrasa nearby would have reinforced its religious and educational significance, aligning with the Islamic architectural tradition of minarets marking the presence of a place of worship. The intricate calligraphy and decorative elements adorning the minaret provide insights into the cultural and religious milieu of the Gurid dynasty. The inscriptions include verses from the Quran glorifying God and illustrating the piety of the builders. These artistic features not only enhance the aesthetic appeal of the structure, but also serve as a historical record of the Gurid reign, reflecting their devotion to Islam and their patronage of the arts. Adding to the enigma of the Minaret of Jam is the lack of contemporary written records detailing its construction and original purpose. This absence of documentation leaves much to speculation and scholarly interpretation, prompting ongoing research and exploration. The Minaret's remarkable preservation amidst the rugged landscape of central Afghanistan is a testament to the durability and craftsmanship of its builders, who employed advanced engineering techniques to withstand the test of time. One theory posits that the Minaret of Jam was part of an elaborate architectural complex that has since vanished due to natural disasters or human activities. Archaeological surveys in the surrounding area have uncovered remnants of structures and artifacts, suggesting the existence of a once thriving urban center. These findings support the idea that the minaret was not an isolated monument but rather a focal point within a larger settlement, serving both practical and ceremonial functions. The enduring mystery of the Minaret of Jam continues to captivate historians, archaeologists and visitors alike. Its stunning beauty and intricate design stand as a silent witness to a bygone era, evoking admiration and curiosity about the people who created it and the civilization to which it belonged. As we conclude our exploration of these enigmatic towers, the Minaret of Jam reminds us of the enduring legacy of human ingenuity and the rich tapestry of history woven by ancient cultures. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world's ancient marvels. 
Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more fascinating explorations of historical mysteries. The 16th Tower on our journey involves the Towers of Silence. In Iran, the Towers of Silence were used in Zoroastrian funerary practices, providing a unique glimpse into the cultural and religious beliefs of ancient Persian life. These structures, known as Dakma, were typically circular, open-air stone towers situated on elevated hills or remote locations away from human habitation. According to Zoroastrian tradition, the deceased were placed atop these towers to be exposed to the elements and scavenging birds such as vultures. This practice, known as excarnation, was rooted in the Zoroastrian belief in the purity of the earth, fire, and water. The Towers of Silence were designed to prevent the pollution of these sacred elements by ensuring that the body did not come into contact with them. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Towers of Silence is their reflection of Zoroastrian cosmology and ethics. Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions, emphasizes the duality of good and evil and the importance of maintaining cosmic balance. The exposure of the dead to scavenging birds was seen as a way to facilitate the natural cycle of life and death, allowing the body to return to nature without contaminating the earth. This practice also underscored the Zoroastrian principle of Ashar, which represents truth, order, and righteousness. By adhering to this funerary custom, Zoroastrians demonstrated their commitment to upholding the purity and harmony of the natural world. The architectural design of the Towers of Silence also offers insights into ancient Persian engineering and social organization. These towers were often constructed with a raised platform divided into sections for men, women, and children, reflecting the societal norms and hierarchical structure of Zoroastrian communities. The towers were typically built from locally sourced materials such as stone and brick, showcasing the adaptability and resourcefulness of Persian builders. The placement of the towers in isolated locations highlights the importance of maintaining separation between the living and the dead, a concept central to Zoroastrian ritual purity. Another layer of cultural significance is revealed in the communal aspects of Zoroastrian funerary practices. Family members and community members played an active role in the rituals associated with the Towers of Silence, fostering a sense of solidarity and collective responsibility. The process of preparing the body, transporting it to the tower, and conducting prayers and ceremonies reflected the close-knit nature of Zoroastrian communities and their shared commitment to religious observance. This communal involvement also provided emotional support and comfort to the bereaved, reinforcing the social bonds that were integral to Persian life. The enduring legacy of the Towers of Silence continues to captivate scholars and visitors, offering valuable insights into the spiritual and cultural ethos of ancient Persia. Although the practice of using these towers has largely ceased in modern times, their historical and religious significance remains deeply rooted in the Zoroastrian heritage. As we conclude our exploration of these enigmatic towers, the Towers of Silence stand as a testament to the profound spiritual beliefs and societal values that shaped ancient Persian civilization. Our journey through the world's ancient marvels reveals the rich diversity of human cultures and their remarkable architectural achievements. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of historical mysteries. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more fascinating insights into the past. The 17th tower on our journey involves the Obelisk of Aksum. Standing tall in the highlands of Ethiopia, the ancient obelisks of Aksum, particularly the monumental one, are mysteries of engineering and cultural significance. These towering stones, some reaching up to 80 feet, were erected by the Aksumite civilization between the 4th and 5th centuries AD. 
The obelisk of Axum, one of the most well-known examples, weighs about 160 tons and is intricately carved with windows, doors, and decorative elements that mimic the architecture of contemporary Axumite buildings. This attention to detail and grandeur makes the obelisk a fascinating subject of study for historians and archaeologists alike. One of the most captivating aspects of the obelisk of Axum is its sheer size and the mystery surrounding its transportation and erection. Without modern machinery, the Axumites managed to quarry, carve, and raise these colossal stones with precision and skill. Scholars believe that the obelisks were transported from quarries several kilometers away, possibly using sledges, rollers, and human labor. The methods used to lift these massive structures into place are still a subject of debate, with theories ranging from the use of earthen ramps to sophisticated pulley systems. This feat of engineering highlights the advanced technical knowledge and organizational abilities of the Axumite civilization, the cultural significance of the obelisks is equally compelling. These towering monuments are believed to have served as markers for underground burial chambers of Axumite royalty and nobility. The carvings on the obelisks, which resemble multi-storied buildings, suggest that they symbolized a connection between the earthly realm and the afterlife. This symbolism reflects the Axumite belief in the continuity of life after death and the importance of commemorating the deceased with grand monuments. Additionally, the obelisks may have been erected to demonstrate the power and prestige of the Axumite rulers, serving as enduring symbols of their authority and influence. Another intriguing aspect of the obelisk of Axum is its historical and religious context. The Axumite civilization, which was one of the great powers of the ancient world, played a significant role in the early Christianization of the region. King Azana, one of the most prominent Axumite rulers, adopted Christianity in the 4th century AD, making Axum one of the earliest Christian states. The obelisks, therefore, not only represent a pre-Christian cultural heritage, but also provide insights into the transitional period when Axum embraced Christianity. The fusion of traditional Axumite symbols with Christian iconography in later monuments illustrates the dynamic cultural and religious landscape of the time. The obelisk of Axum also sheds light on Ethiopia's rich historical connections with other ancient civilizations. Axum was a major trading empire that engaged in commerce with the Roman Empire, India, and the Arabian Peninsula. The influence of these interactions is evident in the architectural styles and motifs found on the obelisks, which incorporate elements from various cultures. This cross-cultural exchange further underscores the significance of Axum as a hub of commerce and cultural interaction in the ancient world. As we continue our exploration of these enigmatic towers, the obelisk of Axum stands as a testament to the engineering prowess, cultural richness, and historical significance of the Axumite civilization. These monumental stones offer a glimpse into the beliefs and achievements of an ancient society that left a lasting legacy on the Ethiopian landscape. Our journey through the world's ancient marvels continues each tower revealing unique insights into the ingenuity and heritage of past civilizations. Stay tuned to uncover more secrets of human history and architectural achievement. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more fascinating explorations of historical mysteries. From the deserts of the Middle East to the green hills of Scotland, these enigmatic towers stand as silent sentinels of history. Each one holds secrets and stories that challenge our understanding of ancient civilizations. These structures are not just feats of engineering, but are also symbols of the cultural, religious, and social dynamics of their times. As we continue to uncover their mysteries, they remind us of humanity's enduring drive to build, explore, and reach for the skies. The Watchtower of Sialk, with its dual-purpose design, the Nurag of Sardinia, shrouded in mystery, the majestic Great Zimbabwe, the Scottish Brocks, the iconic Tower of Babel, 
the pharaohs of Alexandria, the astral-aligned pillars of Teohuanoco, the medieval round towers of Ireland, the artistic Cantonese pagodas, the fortress palace of Sigeria, the Sumerian ziggurats, the communal Great Kiev of Choco Canyon, the fortified towers of Pistum, the acoustically designed temples of Malta, the elaborately decorated minaret of Jam, and the monolithic obelisk of Axum, all represent a tapestry of human ingenuity and aspiration. Each tower invites us to ponder the lives of those who built them, their purposes, and the enduring legacies they left behind. The stories of these towers continue to unfold through archaeological discoveries and scholarly interpretations, offering us deeper insights into the diverse ways ancient peoples expressed their identities and interacted with their environments. Our journey through history reveals the common threads of human curiosity, creativity, and resilience that connect us across time and space. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of historical mysteries. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more fascinating insights into the past.